Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Erin and this channel is all about entrepreneurship and living your best life. I created a video a few months ago which was all about how to create and sell an ebook online and that video has done so well that what I thought I'd do in today's video was teach you how to create and sell an online course. I've had so much success in my business from the online courses that I've created and I know so many entrepreneurs who purely sell online courses and have been able to reach the multiple six and multiple seven figure marks just through those courses. If you're someone who's sitting there thinking, I'd love to start a business, but I really don't know where to start, then an online course might be perfect for you. If you did enjoy the video, I would very much appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you are new around here, then consider subscribing. All right, I'm just gonna jump straight into the tips. So grab your pen and paper and note down everything you hear, as well as any ideas for a course that you do have. Which brings me to the first tip is when you are creating an online course, the very first thing that you need to do is figure out the subject for your course. Most likely this is gonna come from something that you already teach. Maybe you're a coach, maybe you're a consultant, maybe you're a freelancer, and you have a certain level of skills or expertise that people are already paying you for, or maybe it's something that people aren't yet paying you for, but you know you've got a certain set of knowledge in. This is most likely going to be the topic for your course. You make it a lot harder for yourself if you try to create a course on something that you do not have knowledge in, because then you need an extra layer of research on top of that. So do yourself a favor and choose your course topic Topic based on something you already know. And here's the thing, imposter syndrome comes in a lot here. We often think, Ugh, no one's gonna pay for that when we have a certain set of skills. But trust me, if people are searching for videos online, there are podcasts being created about it, there are books being written about it, it is a topic that people are gonna pay for. I've seen courses created about so many different things. I've had a student who created a course about how to have a better relationship with your animals. I've seen students who've created courses about how to craft. I've seen students to create courses about how to cook, how to build a business, how to be healthy. Every single niche that you can possibly think of has a course. So whatever skills that you have at this stage, you can definitely create a course from that. And it makes it so much easier because you're just pulling that information out of you. So the first thing that you wanna do if you're thinking about monetizing from online learning is think about the topic that you can create your course from. But then the next thing that you need to do, so step number two, is that you do need to validate the course idea and the course plan or content. And what I mean by this is often we think intuitively that we know what the market wants or what our audience would want. But there has to be this equilibrium point between you monetizing your passion as well as you bringing the market something it actually needs. So when you've chosen your core topic, you want to build a plan around the modules or the information that you're going to deliver. Then you wanna go out and do some research and figure out how much people are willing to pay for that particular topic. How much competition is out there? How likely are people to purchase this product? How much do they need to know in order to get the results? What is the result that they want? What are the limitations? What are the hesitations? The more research you do around the topic of your course and what is going to empower people to actually purchase it, the better that you are not only going to be able to create that course to be successful for your audience, but also the better you're going to be able to market that and sell it and be successful with that product. The thing that makes a successful course is being able to deliver results for people. I think so many of us get confused thinking the more videos I make, the better high quality of the videos that I make or audio or however you're creating your course is going to mean that I'm going to be able to get that many sales. It has nothing to do with quality. It has nothing to do with the logistics. All a course success has to do with is how well it gets results for people. So once you've chosen your topic and you've started to build your plan, go out there and do some research. Then from that research, you could start actually building the course, which is step number three. You don't have to have a completed course, but at least put together some of the information, put together some of the content, put together some of the exercises or action steps that a student would take. And then what you wanna do is you want to get a better testing program going. Now what a beta testing program or beta testing program, if, if that's how you pronounce it, what this actually is, is you validating the information that you're going to teach. 
So you taking the content that you've decided to teach and giving it to a certain set of students so that they can test it out and see if they actually do get results from this. So say for example, you wanted to create a course on how to meal prep and you've got all this information because you've been meal prepping for years, people are always asking you for advice on how to meal prep. You've made a plan, it's gonna be three modules. The first module is gonna be shopping, the next module is gonna be preparation and then the third module is going to be the prepping itself. Once you've put together a little bit of that content, you would find a group of people which you can give that content to essentially for free they can test it see whether the content is easy to understand see whether the content is easy for them to work through whether it's simple enough for them to get results whether it's engaging enough and then what you can do from that feedback that you get from those beta testers beta testers you can start building the final product of your course which brings me to the next step and i think we're up to number four maybe i don't know i've lost at this stage but then you want to actually think about the structure and the delivery method of your course are you gonna build your course purely through videos and workbooks? Is it just going to be workbooks? Is it going to be audio? Is it gonna be audio and a group coaching element? Is it going to be video and a Facebook group? There are so many different ways that you can build a course and so many different ways in which you can put together the information so it's best delivered, but that is going to come down to the topic of your course. If you're doing something that's quite visual, it's highly likely that you're going to want to have visual video. If you're doing something that's maybe a little more, a little more theor a theoretical and it's something that you're teaching, maybe you'll do video, but do it with slides in a workbook. If you're doing something that is maybe a little bit more emotional or mindset based, you could even do a course just with audio. It's going to be based on the topic of your course and which is the best way that will keep your students engaged. I'm actually hosting a free five day challenge called the Monetize Your Passion in 2019 Challenge. This is going to help students to build their signature product by monetizing their passion. So if this step is confusing you a little bit, I've left a link down below. It's a free challenge. It's starting in December if you're watching this video as it goes live. Um, and this is really going to help you to craft out the more logistical bits of creating a course or, or, or monetizing your passion in any sense. The next thing you would do step four is think about the best delivery method for that course. And then, you know, four point two uh, is going to be actually thinking about how that is going to be delivered. Most people host their courses on online platforms. All of my courses are hosted on a platform called Teachable. Even my membership program is hosted on this platform. There are so many different uh, versions of this. You have Teachable, you have Thinkific, you have Kajabi. These platforms are great because they're specifically designed to host online courses and the user experience is built around what these developers already know to be easy for someone to work through a course. Now, obviously the other way that you could do this is by creating the course just on your own website. You could do the course just in a Facebook group with their new units method. You could create it as an email sequence. Again, there's lots of different ways you can do this. And this is again, something we'll cover in the challenge. You've got to think about the best method of delivery so that your students are going to get the best results. Some courses need extra support. So it may mean that you have the content in video form hosted on a platform like Teachable, but you also have a Facebook group where they can ask you questions. So again, thinking about the best method in which your students of this course are going to get the best results. The next thing that you wanna do is of course set the price for your course. Now I have a piece of advice and please hear me when I say, you can always go up, you cannot go down. With your course, you're better off thinking about what's the lowest price in which I'll be happy with, getting a few students in, getting the feedback, and then increasing it as you go. You can increase your course as quickly or as often as you possibly want. But as soon as you get one student at any price, you can never go back down unless you remove some of the information or change the structure of the course. Based on the research that you did in the very beginning, based on the topic of your course, based on how deep the pockets of your audience is, based on how much you wanna make yourself, based on your business model, based on the structure of the program, based on the value, based on the outcome of this particular program, that is what you're going to be basing the price of your course on. This is a bit of a gray area. A lot of people struggle to price their programs. 
times. But the best advice that I can give you is start lower and then increase as you go. And then the final piece of advice that I do have is marketing your course. So many people fall into the trap of thinking, I'll just create a course and I'll put it up on my website and I'll see the dollars flow in. Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen for someone like me who's got an audience of almost 100,000. It doesn't happen for someone like my coach who is a seven-figure entrepreneur. No matter what stage of business you're at, you still need to be marketing and launching and have a sales strategy for your course. And again, sorry to drop it in here, but this is something we are going to be covering in the Monetize Your Passion, how to build a marketing plan for your signature offer. But for those of you who are maybe watching it later than the the work the challenge what you need to do is put together a plan for marketing your course now this might be through a webinar this might be through a freebie this might be through a challenge this might be through ads this might be through an email sequence there's so many different ways that you can market your course there's so many different ways that you can launch a course if you had a course that was something maybe a little bit more involved, like a business course or a health course, something with a group element, it might even be worth you doing open and closed enrollment periods. So this is where the course is actually only available to enroll and purchase certain times of the year. This is also a great strategy because it does create urgency. But either way, you cannot just expect to create the course and that people are just going to buy it. You have to put yourself out there. You have to put in the effort to sell that course by creating a marketing strategy and doing it consistently. All right, so that's it for me. I know this was just scratching the surface, but if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or leave something in the comments below. I am totally, totally Really happy to be here and support you on your journey to creating a course. I know it's a very detailed and intricate topic that a lot of people are building their own courses around because there's so much involved, but I hope this at least gave you some clarity and some insight for how you can start creating your first online course. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.